Hi everybody, Jen here from Serenity Hill Farmstead. Uh, I am working on tomatoes. I swear this is a homeschool video, uh, but it is also still harvest season. So we multitask because this has to get done. Honestly, um, harvesting all of this stuff is what sparked the idea for this video to begin with. This is the time of year that gardeners are pretty burnt out. The garden doesn't look as nice as it used to. It, it is definitely not as pretty as it was. And we kind of don't want to deal with it anymore. We're dealing with droughts or in our case, way too much rain. Uh, and we have increased garden pests because of that and disease. And it's just, like I said, it's just not as pretty as it used to be. And then you deal with stuff like this. This is a bell pepper. We don't want to deal with this. That's for the chickens. There's a lot of things to deal with. Yield disappointments or things just, I mean, not even producing anything. It's just, it can be a very disappointing time. And by this point in time, um, the things that have produced greatly for you, you're kind of sick of looking at. So, you get burnt out. But homeschooling, it's the same deal. After a while, doing the same exact things, day in, day out, uh, and having, you know, problems with technology or with curriculum not working the way you wanted it to or attitudes from kids or from moms <laughs> it gets it gets old after a while and you get burnt out and I don't know a single homeschool mama that doesn't deal with homeschool burnout at least once a year I know I do another one for the chickens there are some fantastic videos out there that talk about uh, beating homeschool burnout and they give you so many different ideas on how to combat it and you're gonna hear trained in the background because I don't have time to pause the video so there are quite a few videos out there that tell a mama how to help how to beat the homeschool burnout once it hits and there are some things out there to help you prevent homeschool burnout but I want to talk about something maybe a little bit different from that, and that is recognizing when it's going to hit, when it's starting to hit. When you're getting to that point where you're like, uh oh, it's coming. So if you can recognize your warning signs, then you can avoid burnout altogether or lessen the severity of it. At least that's the hope. So today I'm going to share how I do that, how um, I watch for it and what I do when I see those warning signs start to pop up. So the very first thing I have to try and keep an eye out for uh, is identifying my triggers. What is going to be a recipe for disaster for me? So long stretches of sleep deprivation, that is a big one. I can do a night here and there, not getting great sleep, but beyond that, I really need to get good sleep. I need to catch up. My body needs what it needs, and if I do not give it to it, it will protest loudly. So that is important, sleep is important. I'm gonna call this a bad bean to eat. Uh, another thing is juggling a lot of things on my plate all at the same time. This time of year, that's the standard. Um, everything is busy. Everything is happening all at once, and everything needs to be dealt with all at once. So this is a time where burnout for me can be a very real thing. And you might be saying, but it's September, didn't you just start homeschool? No, we have been going for a while now. Um, August, early August, end of July. I can't even remember now without looking at the calendar. Am I out of green beans? But yeah, we've been going for a while. So now this time of year is, is can be when one of my first burnout you know, stretches, hits. Oh, there's some green beans. Or just a sense of being overwhelmed with everything. It, that sense of, you know, there's a lot happening in my life right now and here's this one last thing and it was just the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. And that was it, that's all I could do. And sometimes that's enough. That is enough to set a mama off. And when that happens, when you have that feeling, like the next thing that happens, I'm gonna lose my mind, that's overwhelm. And sometimes it's just a bunch of little things. You may be thinking when you sit and really analyze it, well, there's not really tons of things that are stressful situations that are happening in my life right now, but it could be a pile up of a whole bunch of little things. But when those things happen, I know it's time to rein in what I can rein in, to pull back 
on whatever I can. Sometimes I'll pull back on something, still be involved, still do what I have to do, but just kind of pull back on the amount I'm doing. Or sometimes I'll delegate it, uh, or sometimes I will just stop doing it altogether. Another good example is what I'm doing right now. All of these tomatoes, I'm just taking the stems off and I'm gonna stick them in bags. And they're going in the freezer because I do not have time to can right now. When garden season is over and this garden does not need so much of my attention, really any of my attention, that is when I'll pull these tomatoes out and I will can them because I can handle canning, YouTube, house, homeschool. I can do that. I cannot handle canning, house, garden, animals, homestead, YouTube, homeschool. I just, that's too many. It's too many. I probably said a couple things more than once, but you get the point. The second warning sign for me is being short tempered. Now, a lot of things that I just talked about in that first thing kind of result in me being short tempered because when things get overwhelming, you get cranky, you get short tempered, you get tired, you get cranky, you get short tempered. But sometimes that short temper only shows up during certain times in our school day. And that's usually a telltale sign that something is not quite right with school. Something may not be working very well and I need to fix it, I need to adjust it. Maybe it's just curriculum that's not working out well. Maybe it's the way I'm implementing that curriculum. Maybe it's just that a child is not understanding it and I thought they were, or in the case with maybe one or two of my children that are more independent this year, uh, that they are just, they're saying that they understand it, but they're really not. So then I have to go back and reteach but those are frustrations, right? Now that brings up number three, and that is curriculum. Um, curriculum is a personal choice. Everyone has their reasons for choosing the curriculum that they do, but I'm just gonna say, if you're having more days of tears and frustrations and less days of smiles and high fives, then I don't care how spectacular that curriculum claims to be, or all sorts of other people, my phone's going off here, or all sorts of other people are telling you that it is, it may not be a good fit for you and your child, or your child. You may love it, they may hate it, they may hate it, they may love it, you may hate it. If it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit. Maybe you need to look at another curriculum. I'm just saying. Um, I have shared our experiences with choosing the wrong curriculum and how bad it was, and I will share that. I put an iCard up here and I'll link it down in the description box below if you want to check that out. It was not good. It was not good at all. But we got it sorted out, and now, now we're good. So number four, this is probably my biggest one not having a system in place. This was the biggest thing and why when my systems fall apart, now disclaimer here, I have ADHD. So systems are vital to me to be able to really function in any, any kind of, yes, normalcy, any kind of way that makes sense for myself or my family so that there is peace and order and not total mass chaos. I have to have systems. However, I am not a natural homemaker. And it took me a while to realize this, but managing a home, let alone a homeschool, is a business. It's like running a business. And like any good business, you must have systems in place to efficiently manage your time. Um, if you don't, it is chaos. Now that does not mean everything has to be perfect. No, no, that's not what we're striving for here. But you do need to have certain systems, certain things done in a home on a daily basis um, you know, so people eat, have clothes to wear, get educated, things like that. And without these systems, that is very difficult. Time is a rough thing to manage though, especially in our Pinterest era. And if you are trying to print out this beautiful schedule or trying to mimic something from somebody off of YouTube um, that seems to have it all together, let me tell you, somebody else's beautifully managed schedule will not work in your life it will fail in your life. Let me tell you why. Your life is not their life. Their success is not your success. It will not work if you pluck somebody else's plan and put it right into your life. You have a different life, you have a different home, you have different children, you have a different marriage, you have different requirements in your home. It does take time and a lot of trial and error, but you have to look at your home, your life, your homeschool, 
your own needs and create your own thing. Lots of trial and error, more error probably, but it's totally doable and you'll be so happy when you actually find the right thing that you created that works for you. Okay, and the last thing is lack of self-care. Are you sick of hearing about self-care yet? I know I am because really today's day and age, you get bombarded with self-care, especially if you are a homemaker, a stay-at-home mom, a homeschool mom, a, really any kind of woman, you need to have your self-care. But we hear it so much because it is true. It doesn't matter what you do, where you live, how you live, how many kids you have, how many kids you don't have, whatever. It is important. It is so, so vital that you have some self-care. It's important for men to have self-care too. But look, not everybody has the time, the money, a babysitter to be able to just take off and do your self-care, right? True. I do not have the time, the money, or a babysitter to go take off and go shopping for an entire day or what have you. But what I do have is a grocery shopping day. And because of COVID, this is probably the one and only thing I am grateful for when it comes to COVID. I do grocery shopping alone now and I never did before, which is awesome. Maybe your only time alone is grocery shopping. And I know a lot of people say that's not alone time. That's not self care. That's a chore. True. But if you go grocery shopping and say, happen to wander by Starbucks on the way, get yourself a coffee, sit in the parking lot, call a friend you haven't been able to finish a conversation with or a sentence with, or maybe you just wanna binge watch the 137 videos you have saved on your watch later tab in YouTube, mm. get yourself that coffee, make the phone call, watch the shows, take your time, sit in the parking lot before you go inside. You're still getting your task done, you're still getting a little bit of me time, everything is taken care of, you're good. You just have to work with what you have. If that is all you have time to do and you're still not happy with that, then you need to find another way to do it or lower your expectations. So those are my top five warnings that burnout is coming, coming soon and how I deal with it. And now I am out of green beans and out of tomatoes to process here or prepare for the freezer. So I need to go get some bags. I hope that you found this video helpful and that it blessed you or that you can share it with someone and it can bless them. If you are new to our channel and came over just for this video, I am a homeschooling mom to four kids ranging from six to 15. We are a special needs homeschool family. We also backyard homestead and have a permanent 10 acre homestead that we are building from scratch. So if any of that interests you and you would like to stick around for more videos that are kind of sort of like this one, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I put a new video out. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.